Hey everybody, it's Pastor David from Walden Community Church. I wanna talk a little bit about this tree that's behind me. It is set up in our Family Life Center and you might have seen this tree in the past. We put it up every single year. Uh, this is a Chrismon tree. That's right, Chrismon, not Christmas, Chrismon. Chrismon is a combination of two words, Christ and monogram. And so all of the ornaments these beautiful gold and white sequined uh, ornaments, they are all Christian monograms or monograms or symbols that depict different attributes of Jesus Christ and they all uh, help us think about Christmas in a Christian way. And so several ladies from our church, they hand made all of these ornaments years and years and years ago, uh, and they're one of the precious things we have at this church. And so I thought I would just go through uh, the different ornaments that we have and talk about their symbolism every single day from now all the way into Christmas. And so this is our second time together, and today we're gonna look at the Christmas bell. Now, I'm sure you've seen a bell uh, before you know what bells look like, and I don't know if you ever thought about them as being a Christian symbol, but Bells have been a part of our faith since the very beginning. In fact, you can go all the way back to the book of Exodus where you first see bells mentioned, and that is in Exodus 28. It says, a golden bell and a pomegranate around the hem of the robe, and it shall be on Aaron when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord and when he comes out so that he does not die. You know, since the fifth century, a lot of churches have used bells, right? And I don't think it's uncommon when you see some of the vintage churches, uh, you see a bell tower, right? Uh, bells have been a part of church life for a very long time. Bells would, well, most notably, call people to church, right? When it was time for service, time to worship, the bells would ring, remind them to come. Uh, and they would also ring for special services. So maybe there was an evening mass or a Christmas Eve service, something special that uh, they wanted to call attention to. They would also ring out the time. You know, the, the church building was usually the only building in town that would have a clock or something attached to it. It was in the, in the center of the community, and so it would ring out the time, it would ring out the hours so that you know what time it was. Plus, when you hear the church bells, you know they are coming from the church. And so sometimes just the ringing of that bell just reminds you of your own faith and your own walk. Now, this passage from Exodus speaks about bells on the hem of the garment of Aaron, and he was the high priest. And so the sound of the bells told all the people that Aaron was going in and out of the most holiest place. The bells were a sound that was made holy by the Lord. You know, Christmas is a time where we hear bells everywhere, right? Uh, we could be reminded of the bell ringers that are outside in front of stores, or we could be reminded of the song, Silver Bells, when it's sung by Bing Crosby. That's that's always a winter favorite. And while it is a secular song, I think those bells, they harken back to the past, right? They remind us of a time when life was simpler. But the bells worn by Aaron the high priest, I mean, those meant something totally different. The bells in that instance were indicative of the holiness that was being placed on Aaron and what he was about to do, okay? And this perspective, I think, is something that we could still adopt at Christmas time whenever we hear the bells. In another passage, Zechariah 14, it says, on that day, holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses. And this is about Jesus and the second coming. This Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but we also look forward to the time when he comes for us again. And on that day, the bells will ring. Merry Christmas.